Good morning. Another beautiful morning. It's a place to see so many faces we haven't seen in a few weeks. Thank you all for coming this morning. God's soul to see the covenant love of Abram and Sarah. God's love extended to their whole family tree, descendants who would be more numerous than the stars in the sky. How many, like us, have found a home in branches? Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home with the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, but by sight. Let me repeat that. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men what we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to command ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those whose lives should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly, worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Let me repeat that. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And if you join me in this morning's response of God's worship, God of covenant love, we praise you for planting seeds of love with Abraham, Sarah, and their descendants. God of incarnate love, we marvel at the magnificent family tree that your divine love has created among us. God of ultimate love, we thank you that you have made a home for us within the branches of your family tree. God of everlasting love, we worship you, we love you, and we honor you with all that we are. <clears throat> and let's continue to honor God by turning to hymn number 454 in the red hymnal. Open my eyes at five may see. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Happy Father's Day. And this morning, I... Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> this, this morning, my instructions were.
were to pick easy pins. <laughs> and, uh, I'm familiar, so hopefully, hopefully I've done that. And uh, and Shannon has agreed to run the the iPod for me. So I'm blessed this morning. Okay. Our flower of their own takes good, such good care of the church flower bed all front. 
It looks wonderful. So thank you all. I see the church in the back. You can spell the church place for Cardiff Earth. Chan left a lot of dog hair up here, so we appreciate all you guys do for everything that keeps this building. I don't know if we if we received it yet, we'll, we'll receive a survey from the insurance company from Yeah. So we don't want to talk about insurance today. Today's a beautiful, wonderful fun <laughs> day. So let's continue with the child in the soul. So this week, I want to read to you again from the Book of Psalms. The Book of Psalms, remember, is a collection of psalms that expressly direct that express directly to God almost every human emotion and feeling that we may experience in life. There are psalms of lament, which is crying out the grief. There are psalms of thanksgiving, giving God thanks in all things. The past few weeks, we have heard psalms of thanksgiving. As we continue to read the psalms, we can use them to be honest with God about our feelings. Again today, as I read this psalm, I want you to think about what feelings this psalm expresses. I will ask you after I read it, if you think this, that it is a psalm of thanksgiving or lament. Does it sound like it is giving thanks to God or crying out to God. Why, God, did this happen to me? It's Psalm 20, and it's a directed of music, a Psalm of David. May the Lord answer you when you are in trouble. May the God of Jacob keep you safe. May he send you help from the sacred tent. May he give you aid from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices. May he accept your burnt offerings. May he give you what your heart wishes for. May he make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory. May we lift up our flags in the name of our God. May the Lord give you everything you ask for. Lord, give victory to the King. Answer when we call out to you. So what type of psalm is Psalm 20? This psalm is one of blessing. Did you hear words such as safe, send help, give help, trust in God, in God answering us all when we call out? Those are all wonderful ways we have confidence in the blessing of God. Often the psalms we read are personal. They are about one person's needs, fears, or joys. This psalm is a little different. With this psalm, we look outside ourselves to our loved ones. Let me tell you a personal story to help, to help us understand this psalm. A husband sat in a hospital waiting. His wife was in the operating room having surgery to help him <coughs> over her sickness. The husband was afraid. He had never sat in the waiting room for so long by himself. His wife had never had any kind of surgery before. Have you, have any of you had surgery? You probably felt scared just as this husband did. The husband didn't like the way he felt. Being so scared made him feel alone, helpless, and even hopeless. Have you ever felt so hopeless that you felt there was no hope? It's a horrible feeling, that's for sure. It seemed like the minutes took hours to pass while he waited. Every so often, he would look at the time on his phone. He would answer a text message, text message from a friend asking, how is it going? All the while, there was still no word from the doctor about the surgery. There were other people in the waiting room. Some were reading books, while others spoke on their phones. They all seemed anxious. The husband tried to have a conversation with the elderly lady sitting next to him, but he was just too worried about his wife. He decided to take a walk down the hallway of the hospital. Maybe I would get a cup of coffee, he thought. A cup of coffee might take my mind off worrying so much. He wondered why he was so worried. 
They had found a great hospital with the best doctors, but he continued to worry. As he walked down the hallway, he noticed a gift shop filled with teddy bears, get well cards, balloons, and candy bars. I will keep walking to see what else is down this hallway, he thought. As the husband continued down the hall, he saw a sign with an arrow pointing to the chapel. He felt that he should go into the chapel. He hadn't been to church in a long time, yet he still felt like going in. I will just sit in the back, he thought. No one will even notice that I am in here. He walked in, but instead of sitting in the back, he went to the front of the chapel and knelt at the altar. The chapel was empty and quiet. As the candles on the altar flickered, he began to pray. God, I don't even know what to say. He couldn't think of the words to pray. But finally he said, Please help my wife get through this. Please protect her. Please take care of her. As he left the chapel, he felt a peace he had never felt before. There was nothing else he could do but rely on God to take care of his wife and her doctors. He returned to the waiting room in silence. There was still no news. Others, wait, others waiting were being notified about their loved ones coming out of surgery. Still he waited, but this time he felt at peace. The husband felt a new confidence that everything would be okay. Finally, his wife's surgeon came out and walked directly to him. Good news, she said with a smile on her face. The surgery went as well as it could have. Your wife did great. She's waking up and you will be able to see her in a little while. Have you ever felt worried and scared about something? When you do, when you do feel those feelings, how can you turn to God in those moments? What did the husband in the story do when he felt those feelings? He prayed. When you feel worried or afraid, remember the song and the story of the husband and his wife. Remember how he found his way into conversation with God through prayer. Through prayer, the husband was able to look not only at himself, but also focus on his wife, whom he loved so much. And God was able to provide comfort to the husband and give him a feeling of peace. God takes care of our every need. God watches over us when we are scared or afraid. Those are the definitions of the word tend. God will tend. Tend. Tend means to take care of, to have responsibility for. When you are scared, Allow God to tend to your every need. In those moments, pray for loved ones that you care for. I wonder who in your life needs you to pray for them today. As we pray, think of someone in your life for whom you should pray. Why do you think of them? Are they hurting? Do they need to feel peace in your life that only God can provide? How can God tend to them? Now let's pray. God of peace, stay beside me through this day. When I hurt, take away my pain. When I am afraid, remove my fear. Keep me safe. Always keep my heart filled with gladness. Thank you for your love, which is always with me. Thank you for being a God who can. And let us continue our prayers to God by turning once again to the Red Hymnal. This is hymn number 131. We gather together.
not see as mortal see. For you look not at outward appearances, but rather on the heart. We long to be found worthy when we look upon our hearts. We yearn to forsake our petty grievances and our unkind thoughts. We wish we could shut our selfish motivations and our deceptions. God, please help us be the best versions of ourselves. It's painful to admit the harm we do to one another. Create in our hearts a burning desire to please you. Grant us the courage to see our hearts as you see them, and give us the wisdom to trust your love, for you seek to transform us into your new creations. Amen. And if you will join me in the responsive words of assurance. May those who desire to please Christ find the desires of their hearts. In Christ we are new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And now is the time for our prayers for the people. Is there anyone caught on our prayer list that you'd like to lift up this morning? Uh, Willie Johnson is back in transfer. God bless him. He was clear. He's, he's loving being back there. He loves the work he does. All right. God, God, God be praised. God praised. Thank goodness. Well, okay. Yeah. And she is with us this morning. That's great. This is well. Okay. And yes. Um, just ask for prayer. Sarah and a group of her friends have traveled up to Canada. So just, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're there for a week. So. Yes, I remember my wonderful trip to Canada. So prayers for Sarah and her <laughs> friends on that trip. Thanks, that's yeah. making me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, yes. I just had an answer prayer this week. I got. A, I have a cousin who has four children. The last one just graduated. She has four girls, and um, she has been. Um, she hasn't seen them, spoken to them. They want nothing. To with her for the last eight years. Um, I've been praying and praying and praying that as they got older they would see the need for their own in their life. And um, the third of mine actually uh, reached out to her mom, wanted to see her. They've been together and she had a two month old baby. So um, now she's a granny and has at least one of her daughters back in her life. So answers my prayers. Yes, that is a very nice story. I'm glad she was able to do that. And I hope the other daughters will see their way home at some point, too. What a wonderful story. And I have a prayer request from Susan. If I can find it quickly here, I forgot to write it down. Shame on me. Susan, as she puts our pianist, she's away traveling for the next couple of weeks. And I don't think I have. Ah, yes. Susan asked us to pray for her Aunt Myrtle, who is 97 years old. She's been doing good, but it may be a uh, coming time when God calls her to his kingdom. So she asked that we add Myrtle to our prayers, or for this week's prayers. Are there any others? From the prayer list, let's, let's lift up any body. Judy, David, John, Jenny, Rosemary, Billy, Stephanie and Ella, Donnie, George and Anne, Teresa, Joe and Bonnie, Ted, Kim, Doug, Gilly, Evelyn, Redmond and Fanny, Jane and Fanny, Hey, Billy, Joanne, Martha, Alan and Mary Lou, Kevin, Amy, Chi Chi, Tina, Russ, Cheryl, Melissa, Nellie, Suzette, Brenda, Tabor, Jeff, Paisley, Heather, Dean, Judy, Cindy, Megan, Jim, Bessie, Tony, Dave, Amy, those we just mentioned, 
all students and teachers, the congregation of St. James, all of our elected officials, all of our young people, the citizens of Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine, the Christians throughout the world, all the citizens of the world, all those suffering with cancer in their families. And if you join me in the prayer that you're finding your own day, surround these persons with your love and care, sustain and support them in their time of need. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Savior. Amen. May God grant your heart's desires. Share this hope as you exchange signs of Christ's peace with one another, as we do each week by singing a hymn. And this week the hymn is hymn number 585, This with the Light of Life. Yes, in peace. 
I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's appointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look on things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinad and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then to Shema passed by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was gloomy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to all. And now we turn to the New Testament, the Gospel of Mark. This is chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. This is some parables Jesus told. So he also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Ponder in silence what you sense the love of Christ is urging you to do. What would you have to say no to to say yes to Christ's urging? What single step toward yes are you prepared to make today? Let us take a moment to think about that. Today's scriptures invite us to observe the work of our covenant God. The one who sees the king inside the child David, the greatest of all the shrubs inside the smallest of seeds, in the kingdom of God on earth, as it is in heaven. The gospel reading reminds us that the mystery of growth and transformation unfolds over time. Paul reminds us that death makes way for the birth of God's new creation for all who live for Christ. When we experience trouble along the way, the shepherd boy turned king, David, invites us to place our trust in God. Thanks be to God. Because in this secular world we live in, it's very difficult to know whom to trust. As consumers, do we trust the retailer is giving us the best price or do we think they are marking it up to make some extra money? When getting your car repaired, 
Do you trust that the service shop is doing only what needs to be repaired, or are they adding unnecessary work to make some extra money? When you get your phone or cable bill, do you trust that all those extra fees are accurate, or did they add something extra? Then there are the people you need. I, for one, feel as if I've been lied to more in the last five years than in the first 51 years of my life. I grew up in a patriotic household and was taught to respect the President of the United States regardless of what party he represented or if some of his ideas were different from ours. I grew up listening to the news, believing what was being reported was true. Perhaps it is just my perception, perhaps it is just the point of life that I'm at, or perhaps it's because people stopped putting their trust in God and are no longer concerned with right or wrong, with good versus evil. But whatever it is, I'm sad to say, I no longer trust people as I once did. I do, however, trust in God. Remember last week how we talked about God's unchangingness? Putting your trust in God is something that should never change in your life. We also need not to forget that God has put His trust in us. When we plant seeds in our gardens, do we put them in the dirt and trust they will grow? Or do we prepare and nurture the soil? Do we water them and look after them? When they begin to grow, do we keep the weeds away from them? Do we keep them pruned and happy? This is the trust God has put into us. This is why there should be a room full of Sunday school children. I trust that God is going to call his children back to our churches, but until that day, we must continue to honor the trust that God has put in us. We can do that with the children in our family, in extended families. We can do that within our church family. We can do that with people that reach out to us. And we can do that by how we live our lives and making ourselves someone that can be trusted. As Jesus mentions in the parable of the grower, when we are away from our seed and not tending it, it continues to grow. I think that's kind of what happened to me. When I was away from the church, I continued to grow. The path I took it's not one that I would recommend, but it does go to show that God never leaves us. He never abandons us, and He never forgets about us. When someone asks me how I can trust in God, I simply need to go over the events of my life. Nothing spectacular will likely ever happen to me. I won't end up in any history books, but I will have life. A life when I enter the kingdom of heaven where I will be able to say that I did my best to live out a Christ-like life while on earth. Sure, there were mistakes and hardships along the way, but with your help, God, I made it through. By trusting God, I made it through. With our elections coming up in just a few months, I would be remiss not to mention our reading from 1 Samuel this morning. Here is a good example of what can happen when you don't put your trust in God. The people of Israel wanted a king. God wanted to be their king. They wanted a human king. They got Saul. Not exactly the best king. Who did God choose to replace Saul? A very unlikely candidate. It doesn't appear that we will get any unlikely candidates this year. They seem to be pretty much set. All I will say is to put your trust in God. God will get us through this election cycle and through the next four years. 
then we will do it again. Perhaps 2028 will be the year God calls someone unexpected to lead our country. Well, I'm pretty sure we are all good citizens and should continue to be so. I will also say that we must never forget who our true leader is. The one that we can put our unchanging trust in forever and always. In the name of everyone here and everything that is good and honest and trustworthy, may it be so. And let us continue our walk, our journey, by turning this time to the black hole, the faith we say. It's hymn number 2158, just a closer walk with thee.
and then that can resolve into May 
gold and sheep will be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings in both for him all the day. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains. May his fruit be like leather. And may it be blossom forth in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May people bless themselves by him. All nations call him blessed. Thank you. Now we